Today we're going to talk about second order filter identification from the Bode plot. We'll also do first order and you have to make sure that we're using the right equation that we're trying to target our extraction. If you're doing a high pass filter but using low pass extraction techniques you'll get numbers but chances are there'll be garbage. But here's our first order transfer for a low pass first order high pass. Here's the generic second order low and high pass uh, transfer equations. And the band pass, as we can see, just has an S and an omega naught, where the high pass has S squared and no omega naught, and the low pass has omega naught but no S terms. You've got to have a second order to have a band pass. And also systems can have almost any anything we want where but these are the the generic filters there's also uh, a notch filter but we're not going to go over that today so for a first order low pass filter we have a DC gain it doesn't have to be 0 DB but for this example we have uh, 0 DB and we just look it up and we see it's 0 DB and then we just uh, take the inverse decibel function and it's one. Now we need to find omega naught. Some might try to go down 3 dB and check the f and find the frequency. It's actually a lot better to use the phase. And since it's first order, the phase goes from 0 to minus 90. And if we substitute j omega naught, we can actually find where we should extract. So although this is the magnitude, the phase at the magnitude of omega naught is more than minus 45. So all we have to do is find minus 45 and come down. There's our kilohertz and multiply that 2 pi and we get omega naught. For the high pass, we have this transfer function where we have a term called AC gain. And we find that by setting S to a really big number. The S terms cancel. And we are left with the gain at high frequencies. In this case, it's 0 dB or 1. Where do we extract omega naught? We substitute j omega into our transfer function do some complex math and we see that this spot occurs at plus 45 degrees phase because a high pass filter goes from plus 90 down to zero so we go from 45 we hit the phase mark and we have a kilohertz multiply that 2 pi we have omega naught and so that's what we have for the low and the high pass here's some examples so the gain is low and then goes high or, or stays constant. Um, that's a high pass. The gain is constant and then goes low. That's a low pass. Phase goes from 0 to minus 90, low pass. Plus 90, down to 0, high pass. Previously, all we have to do to find omega naught is go from minus 45, hit the phase line, come down in this case it's 10 kilohertz that's times 2 pi that's omega naught take 45 hit that phase line and we get 10 kilohertz again in LT spice you can use the cursor function now we can see that the high frequency gain is 40 dB or 100 so the transfer function is s times that gain of 100, and then there's our omega naught. The low pass in this example is 20 dB or 10, so we just get omega naught times 10 divided by S plus omega naught. Now, for a second order low pass filter, we do have three conditions over damped, critically damped, and under damped. It might be tempting for the over damped where you can see two distinct bends in the magnitude to try to extract the poles right there. 
but really it's a lot better to use the generic second order equation and just find omega naught uh, from the phase rather than trying to, f I'll leave it at that. So the DC gain, it's 40 dB, which is 100. Now where do we, which phase do we use? Minus 45, plus 45, plus 90, minus 90. Well, we substitute J omega into our transfer function, which uh, we need this information later, which in this example is 14 dB. All right. But if we continue, we'll see that the magnitude at J omega naught has a phase of minus 90. So now we just come across 90, not 45, and we see 100 hertz. So omega naught is 2 pi times 100 hertz. The gain at DC is 40 dB, or 100. Now we can find the damping coefficient by finding what is the gain at omega naught. In this case, it's 14 dB or 5, and then solving for the damping factor, which in this case is 10. Now for a low pass critically damped, we come over at minus 90. It's still, in this case, 2 pi times 100 hertz. But what has changed is that the gain at, at omega, J omega naught um, before that gain was 14 dB. Now it is almost 34 dB. And if we have 100 divided by that, we actually get a, a lower damping ratio. In this case, it's very close to 1. So with our DC gain here, reading omega naught from minus 90, and then reading this value for h at equal to j omega, we're able to find all three things that we need from the Bode plot. Now let's have a obviously underdamped pair of complex poles. The DC gain is still 40 dB, so that doesn't change. What has changed is this peak is actually an obvious peak, and now we're at 60 dB, whereas before we were at around 34 dB or 14 dB. It's now 60, same equation, and now we get uh, the damping ratio of much less than 1, of 0.05. high pass, <laughs> we find the, DC, the AC gain, in this case, is 14 dB. We can just pull it off of that. On the next page, you'll see why we extract omega naught at 90. In this case, it's 1 hertz times 2 pi. How do we find, why do we find omega naught at plus 90? We use the transfer function for a high pass filter, set it equal to J omega, which follow through on the complex math, and we get the AC gain divided by 2 pi zeta at 90. This should be an equal sign here. So 180 minus 90 is 90. So now we always know that a high pass filter, we extract omega naught if it's second order at plus 90. The zeta, there's our AC gain, there's our gain at J omega, there's our two zeta in this case was 15, and there's our complete transfer function. Now we have a critically damped. We don't have to rederive that we extract omega naught at 90, in this case 1 hertz times 2 pi. I did change um, the AC gain slightly and now it's 6 dB, and Hj omega is 34 milliDB. It's very close to zero. The omega naught is still the same.
So the high frequency gain is 60 B or 2. Here's our zeta equation, which is very close to 1. Now, what we've done here is done an underdamped response, but without a very obvious peak. And something to point out is we still extract that plus 90, all right, which in this case is still 1 hertz. But notice that it, the peak of this waveform is not at the peak of the magnitude. And if we go back here, yes, the peak was very close to omega naught, right? And that is essentially as it becomes, as this gets smaller and smaller and smaller, it approaches a sine wave at or purely imaginary poles. So you get very close to omega naught. But here, we just have a slight rise so we know it's underdamped, but the omega naught is at, the reliable way to find it is at 90 degrees phase. So omega naught, it's still 2 pi extracted at 90. Hj omega, very close to zero. And the high frequency gain, again, is very close to zero. We put this into our calculations, and the high speed gain or high frequency gain is very close to one, and that the damping ratio is very close to a half. Now, the bandpass, we can tell it's a bandpass because the gain increases, flattens, and then reduces with frequency. It's a second order because we have plus 20 dB per decade uh, slope in our gain. And over here in the low pass portion, we have minus 20 B dB per decade gain. Now we were able to prior find a high frequency gain or a low frequency gain. And right now we just have a mid band gain but we actually have to um, extract some things at the extremes because this point um, is only one point or one equation and we're trying to extract the midband gain and the damping ratio. Now we do a little trick where we let S be a lot less than omega naught or less a lot greater than omega naught and we find that in the high pass part we get S times the midband gain divided by omega naught. In the low pass part, we get omega naught times the midband gain divided by S. Either way you do it, we're going to get the same answer. Why did I choose these regions? Is because how can I tell that this is a lot less than that? Is I'm looking at the phase. So I'm very close to the plus 90 here or very close to the minus 90 there. Now I have my mid-band gain, I have my omega naught at zero, which if you, this is how you would calculate it out to find that we're extracting it at zero phase. Now our zeta, once we know our mid-band gain, we can calculate this to be five. Here's another band pass but zeta is smaller. We still extract the midband gain from the extremes. We extract omega naught at zero degrees phase, and in this case, it's still 100 kilohertz. And now we have the damping ratio of one. We let zeta get even smaller. We still have our plus 20 dB per decade, minus 20 dB per decade goes from 90 to minus 90, but notice the phase has a very sharp transition. All right. We have our mid-band gain, it's still 10. We have our gain at J omega. In this case, we get uh, 10 to the 34 divided by 20 as this part.
part of the gain. And it would be hard to do that by eye. I pulled it off with the um, the cursor function of LT Spice. So I get a damping ratio of 0.1. Now let's just take a look at the low, high, and band pass, how we vary the damping ratio. So 0.1, you see this nice resonant peak occurring very close to omega naught. Then as the roots get less imaginary, the phase spreads out. Somewhere in here you'll have a repeated root. Maybe it's this one. Then you'll see that the roots become real and then spread out. But the phase is always crossing at minus 90. You just can't hide that the phase goes from 0 to 180. In this example, only one phase is shown. But the high pass, you can see two distinct real roots. Then it collapses to one repeated root. And then it starts to get exponential as the damping factor decreases. And then we have the band pass, where this might be two real roots, classic band pass response, that then becomes very selective as we increase the damping ratio. If I needed to raise this up to have a gain of 0 dB, you just increase the mid-band gain of your transfer function to design it however you would like. That is pretty much concludes uh, extracting uh, high, low, and band pass second order filters with a review of first order filter from a Bodhi plot.